So I'm going to say welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, this session is about leading a forum through change. It's a big topic. Um, and I'm here with um, Kath Bromfield. I don't know if you want to um, introduce yourself, Kath. Hi, everyone. My name's Kath Bromfield. I'm the Northwest Steering Group member for NMPCF. And um, I love talking about uh, forums and change, really. So looking forward to today. Um, I'm I'm Kate. I'm uh, the operations lead on the parent participation team at Contact, and also an advisor for the Southwest. And Sarah's also here. Sarah Clark has kindly um, come on today, and we've also got Sarah Lee with us from Contact uh, in in the background, and lots of people joining us still. Welcome everybody. Okay. Do you think we should get started? Oh, I, I better say about recording. Um, the session is being recorded, so if you don't want to be recorded and you don't want to be on the recording, please do keep your cameras switched off. Thanks, everyone. Sarah, do you want to come in and introduce yourself as well? Yeah, I can do. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Clark, and I look after the South East for the NMPCF, as well as co-chair at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So I, I guess before we start, we're going to be... Um, leading through how um, a forum can start to look at change what do we need to think about and I guess before we we go any further we'll probably need to say that there's no magic wands so this is more a conversation about some of the things we can start to do but it but it isn't a quick fix so it's not like an easy answer it's more like a conversation for you to start thinking about some of the things um, we all think about all the time really around forums. So again, I'm just going to throw up, this is my one page profile. So as we go through the session today, I think it's just a reminder that it's helpful if we can think about how we need to be supported and what makes us happy. If we're going to think in context of a forum, what are we doing with our time and how might that be the best use of our time and what brings us joy really? So when we're thinking about forums, for me, it's really important to start with ourselves as people who um, want to be part of that. Thanks, Kate. So again, I think, you know, we, we talk about how the National Steering Group feeds into the regional networks and our local parent care forums. But actually, at the heart of what we do is our membership and those children and young people with additional needs and their families and, and sometimes it's good to pause and just come back to that is what we're um, hoping to do as a forum. Um, that's what we should be thinking of. And sometimes we get pulled away into lots of different directions by things like autism in schools or PINs or the change programme or whatever national kind of conversations are taking place. Um, and sometimes that, that becomes our focus and can... Um, distract us really from our core offer sometimes I don't know if anyone else wants to have a chat about this please come in Sarah and Kate if you want to so oh, we've just, got some... just, if, sorry um, I was just going to say that what you said there is so important isn't it because when external changes are happening not just internal in the forum you can be taken in all sorts of different directions so many different directions and there are opportunities and challenges everywhere so having that core focus and going back to the core reason we're all here um I know when things get challenging going back to that really helps me that sort of core priority absolutely so we've got a, a bit of a jam board here if you want to try and use this I think it will appear in the chat as well in a moment um just to kind of tell us a little bit about what you're hoping to get from this session and then we can make sure by the end of it hopefully we've had some conversations around the area you were thinking yeah I'm just going to try and stop sharing so I can put that up and just for anybody that's not um used Jamboard before what you do is just click on the link and then if you look down at the at the left hand side that you can see like a, a little square sticky note and you should be able to um just enter your your in text, um, just enter your comments in there. So that'd be really handy to know from you. I'm just gonna share what we get up in a moment. I 
I'm not looking at the chat at the moment, so I'm hoping people are able to access that and see that, okay? That jam yeah, board. the link's in the chat as well. It, so if you want to click on that, so that's an interesting oh, that's a good question. Yeah. session on its own, how we sit yeah. within uh, that wider charity, that host year, um, in, independence, mm. some big ones already. Yeah. Managing succession planning, yeah. Brilliant. I've got some controversial views on that at the moment. Uh, <laughs> so I guess the 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 royal uh, the change in our queen to king has made me wonder whether uh, succession planning is the right words we use. It's like we're waiting to find someone who will perfectly take over from us and deliver. Um, so I, I'm starting to not use succession planning when I'm talking with forums. And starting to think about, you know, how do we make roles manageable for other people to want to do? Um, and, and also talk about maybe leaving some of those um, places empty. What's the worst that can happen if somebody steps down and a role isn't occupied? So lovely, we've got some ideas on avoiding conflict um, agendas within the steering group. I think that's really, really important. So how do you build that team around what people are aware of or not? Some good practice, um, learning, listening and reflecting. Sometimes it's actually, um, I think the leads of forums are so skilled, but it's actually having that space to think about what we're doing, isn't it, and why and bringing our families along with some of those internal changes, that's really powerful too. Yeah, and how to manage time with so many competing priorities with a budget that isn't increasing. Yeah, we'll cover some of that too, really, I think. Um, yeah. Campaign groups. So that might be another session, but we can touch on it uh, a little bit, really. So learning to delegate and leave the stress outside of home. Powerful, absolutely. Um, some really good suggestions there. So hopefully we're covering some of those, but it's really useful to keep us to task. So thank you. We yeah, can... these are these are great. Thank you, everybody. I think quite a bit of our content addresses most of these. We might not be able to go into massive detail around sort of the campaign groups and the host forum relationship, but they're really good ones to add to our list for thinking about. Um, and just when we talk about it we'll think about the context of that as well if we can thank you okay do you think that's enough time Kath, for me to yeah do i do thanks kate we'll come back to that and just make sure we've perhaps covered most of that at the end please feel free to put things in chat we, you know we want this to be interactive so i guess we're just gonna um revisit um if you've not seen these already so the nolan principles uh, were created um in the mid 90s around actually what we need to be doing um if we're in public life and parent care of forums we talk all the time uh, i sat around the uh, table as strategic leads but actually aren't all coming from those places where we understand um we're there representing other people. So just a reminder to us again, that we need to apply these things to ourselves and be clear that, you know, we are looking to lead, but we are being honest, accountable and open around the principles on which we've got that office. So I guess we always feel as forums, we should just be, people should be grateful, we're willing to do what we do and they should, but equally it's really important that we make sure we look after ourselves, but also our steering group and our membership in our boundaries really. So for me, the principles are who should be holding that office, but also how do we put those boundaries in place? And some of you mentioned that um, in the jam board. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, and I'm just thinking they can become acutely important actually for a forum and its reputation at the point of change or challenge because you are not necessarily, unfortunately, always getting these values being shown to you. 
and that can be really difficult um, to experience. But if you are committed as a leadership group and as a forum to those pr principles, you set the example, you set the expectation of the way in which you want to work with other people. Absolutely. And so um, if, if we're pausing and we're thinking about change within our forums, um, NMPCF have a slide that just kind of brings you back to checking in on all these different things. So thinking about your governance, is it fit for purpose? Does it work? What you might have decided a few years ago might not be where you're thinking now as the steering group. Thinking about those meetings you're going to. So someone mentioned on the jam board, you know, how do you prioritize your meetings? Well, the first thing you need to do is be thinking about what you put in your grant application. That's your core offer as forums. People get other money from other places and that's fine, but are you going to the strategic meetings you need to go to? Um, for chairs, I guess it's maybe two or three a month, um, but for reps wider than that, it's okay to be invited, but not attend, but decide as a collective why that is. Go back to people and say, you know, you're really glad you're invited, but actually your priorities mean that you're not going to be attending that at the moment. Um, you need to think about the people you have involved. Where are the gaps? Where are the things that um, that work really well? And also where you're spending that money, how you're keeping that money and that transparency for your steering group and wider membership. And then the legal entity, I think we're all having more conversations about this as we go through. So actually... You know, many of us decided on our legal entity just on our preference, some are constituted groups still, but actually sometimes that doesn't work as well as it used to. And, and is that still fit for purpose? So, um, you know, a, a, and, and what values do we have underpinning everything we do for our membership? Sorry, Kath, I didn't mean to flip the screen like that if, even if I do a gentle touch on that mouse it flicks to the next screen sorry about that a sensitive slide not a problem so we know forums are raising some of these issues with us but what we need to have is a strategic vision so setting out a clear vision and strategy that can help set the team in the right direction and that isn't just the responsibility of the chair or the leadership within your forums but it's all of you to understand um what you receive the grant for, um, what you have said you will do, but also what are your priorities? And that is the priorities for the membership, not the priorities for your local area. So someone talked about that earlier, and I think it's really hard not to get pulled. Something gets announced and you all get really reactive and think, oh gosh, we've got to do this. And actually spending that time pausing so that that vision fits and people can say, actually, that doesn't fit with our vision. So it's a really good piece of work and we're happy to be involved. But actually, um, it's not the priority of my forum right now. Yeah, I think that's so important, isn't it? And if you've got that shared strategic vision and you're taking time to go back to that together, that's where usually people's passion lie and, and where the where you're headed in terms of your your. The difference you're trying to make and that slide that we had earlier Kath where you put the meetings and the governance and everything there you've almost got your strategic vision there and then underneath it you've got your works your priorities and your streams and so it almost is a juggling act with your leadership group isn't it around which of those you can do and how closely they relate to that vision is how you can how you can decide on the prioritizing what's more important than than the other which is really hard to do with limited funding limited capacity and actually sometimes you have to make really quite hard decisions Absolutely. i think you also have to allow for some flexibility because mm. i think um somebody used a phrase today like we can sometimes feel like feathers in the wind which i really loved because actually we are really reliant on sometimes those external forces so if you suddenly have a campaign group pop up or transport suddenly an issue or well, transport's never suddenly an issue, is it? That's probably a bad one to pick. But um, it, it's always there's always something that's popping up, isn't it? Or Ofsted yeah. rock up. You know, what are you going to do? And how? And having a bit of a plan. You know, have you had your inspection? And when do you think you're going to have it? And that sort of thing. Making sure that you can put a little bit of preparation into some of your strategic vision, so that you're 
you're not on the back foot all the time and that you're able to be a bit of ahead of certain things, particularly if you've got offset inspections that are likely to come, I think, because yeah. they can be really time consuming and put a lot of pressure onto forums. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's such a good point, planning in for some flexibility, isn't it? Mm. And I think, you know, sometimes checking in with some of the national things. So I know NMPCF's talking points and the work we're doing, kind of look ahead to see what's coming as well, because sometimes we we can see elements. But you're right, that flexibility is really important. But I think when those pieces of work pop up, being able to say, well, does that fit with what we're doing for our core offer? Um and then if it doesn't, we're happy to be involved, but you might need to give us more funding or you might need to give us somebody who can help do that for us. And it's OK to kind of be clear around that. But I think um, some of you have mentioned um, tension within a steering group. How, does everybody on the steering group have that same agreement of the direction you're going in and why? So sometimes just having that conversation is really, really important to check you're all on similar pages, really. Thanks, Kate. And so not to get too political, but good old Tony Benn um, has a number of questions that I think are a real challenge. And he did this for politicians, but I think it's quite powerful for forums as well. So some of the challenges we get, campaign groups, et cetera, being really clear on this can be really helpful. So what actual power do we have as forums? Who did we get it from? And is it whose interest do you exercise it? And to whom are you accountable? And the really important thing is how can people get rid of you? So obviously Tony Ben was talking about elected members, but I think sometimes when we have um, tension from our local areas or other family groups, it's because they can't actually see this really clearly. So the term we often use now is something called truth to power. And it means when you stand up for what's right and you tell people in charge what's what. And the idea behind the phrase um, to speak to truth to power is an expression for courageously confronting authorities. So that doesn't mean, you know, um, just being really difficult with them. It's the stuff you all do day by day. It's calling out injustices, working for change, but actually being able to share that, that that's what you do with other forums, other parents, other locality people within your team so sometimes when we talk about the tension that exists it's normally because people haven't understood what a forum's there to do and sometimes our new members our new people who come on we're so grateful they're happy to be involved we don't actually spend that time talking through this is what we're here to do we aren't you know we support families to enable engagement but we're not a support group we're this but we're not that and that's really hard for new people coming in who sometimes think we're there for other things. So it just helps that accountability. But it also really, for me, helps the leadership within your forums to know, actually, this is why we're here. This is how happily we have an AGM and we can do that. If you don't have an AGM, how can people answer those questions? And it's a bit of a holding a mirror up to ourselves. I think one of Thanks. the other things forums struggle with, sorry, Kath, is no, that but... around how do you um vocalize that challenge that you've provided to the to your partners across your local area and then translate that into social media posts for your for your parent carers and your your general membership without it challenging those relationships i think that could be a really tricky balance for forums to get right sometimes i think it's really difficult isn't it and i think what we do is we tend to focus on that first part of going to the meetings being the challenge and not always have time to think about how we're going to have that narrative. Um, but if we don't do that, that's when we get families who are really upset because they don't understand what we're there to do. They think we're there to give their views in those meetings. So it is really important. And we'll come uh, in, in a few slides, I think, to, you know, how are we going to fill the gaps if you aren't good on social media? And I get a little bit frozen with my wording. So if I'm doing it for me, I'm absolutely fine. I know what I believe and I stand by. If it's for the forum or for NMPCF, I immediately start tripping over myself with how would that be interpreted? What would the, Will I say something wrong, et cetera? So um, social media is something that people have to be skilled. They have to understand forums and other ways we can share that out amongst us when some people have some of those skills 
Um, and I guess we're just going to come back to, sometimes I think we forget ourselves as individuals within forums. So if you're leading within your forum, what brings you joy and what doesn't? And what are the gaps? So like the social media example there, you know, that's not something I would want to be doing for my forum. Um, and that sounds a little bit fluffy, but sometimes we take up these roles. Often there's very few people doing the, uh, who are able to support us. And we can kind of get in a groove where we feel everything's done to us and it isn't bringing us joy anymore. So to pause a little bit and think, actually, what do I still want to do within my forum? Um, sometimes when we um, are not getting joy from a forum, but we continue, we actually can become part of that problem because we're not happy and we feel like we've no options and therefore the energy we give can be like that. And that can really affect other people joining the forum or being part of that. So do we understand our shared vision? As we said before, do we know what we have to deliver on and why? If we get additional funding, we, we've signed up for that. So what have we signed up for and are we all clear? Do we understand our existing team? So what brings them joy and what doesn't? And do we celebrate that difference? So sometimes we kind of expect um, leaders within a forum to just be great at everything. Are we clear on what people can do and what they can't do? So for instance, you know, I, I, I'm i really good at elements of a forum. I don't have a great eye for detail. So if there's a report that needs reading, if I need to check it, to be fair, if you want me to respond to emails in a timely way, I'm going to frustrate you. So I would not make a good secretary of a forum. I really enjoy talking to people and selling what a forum do. Sarah's smiling because she has to try and work with me nationally. And actually just understanding people's skills and gifts can let go of some of that guilt. I talk to you know people a lot who lead forums who are trying to do the finance. That isn't their skill base and they get really anxious about it. So are we honest as a steering group or a leadership group? actually, these are my skills and these are the things I'm not great at. So are we all listening to each other? And if we don't really know what our skills are, we can sometimes lose people because we're asking them to do the things that we don't like to do, but actually doesn't bring them any joy either. Forums are volunteers. We've got to think about whether people are getting something out of that, really. Um, and that's really hard for us, to be honest, when we think we're leading. We almost, uh, you know, I see so many people and we try and just be everything to everyone. And that's exhausting. And so how do we kind of bring some of those boundaries back? Yeah, that's so important, isn't it? And I think as well, some things, because we have, you know, forums have to be quite reactive sometimes and respond um sometimes we forget the personal development side of it as well you know there'll be people coming on board offering to help with the forum that actually want to develop so you know what what is it that somebody perhaps wants to do that requires support and so again that's where going back to what sarah said earlier really is building in a bit of that flexibility and and thinking capacity wise how a little bit of support might be provided to somebody who wants to develop in an area because if people are feeling like they're getting that and they're developing themselves that you've also got more of a healthy team there as well I think yeah and I think you know we all know it's much easier to do things ourselves and try and train people up to do them and forums are so bespoke but if we don't start making that time to do that we're going to constantly be where we are and nothing will change. And that's fine if we accept that. But some of us kind of sometimes want things to change but aren't doing anything that will help us us get there, really. Um, yeah. And I think, right, that bit about people coming for a certain time, building the skill set, going and finding another job, that's not a threat to us as a forum. That's a really positive if we're giving people those skills and it's, it's just about how we try and, and see the people who volunteer and why they're volunteering. So I, I guess um, I used to use this analogy when I was a teacher and it's always a great reminder really for me around actually what are the most important tasks. Um, if we've got a jar and we don't have endless energy, time and money, what are the big things we need to be doing? There are some people when they do this exercise, they use stones and they actually write different pieces of work on them and put them in the jar. 
And then sometimes there's some moderate, mod, oh, I can't say that today, moderately important tasks that it's really, really key we get done sometimes, occasionally, et cetera. And then the sand is sometimes the unimportant tasks. And sometimes we prioritize those things that are unimportant because they bring us joy. And that's okay if we've discussed that and decided that as a steering group. But equally, we um, we can sometimes then not have enough time to do those big things that we need to do. Are we all clear on what we're agreed the big bits are? And actually, in your steering group, it's really easy to just get a really big pickle jar and do this exercise. So what do we think of the big ones? What do we think of the little? And I guarantee we will all see that differently. But that conversation can be really helpful in just thinking, that's why that person thinks that's really important, because they think that's a big rock and I don't. And, and you know, come back to your monitoring and your grant form from that. What is our core offer that we have to do? Um. And I think, you know, the sand is really, really important because sometimes it's the things that really bring us joy and keep everyone going. But actually, we just all need to be clear. It's like nice. It's not the stuff we're always meant to be doing. Yeah. And I think to say with that, with the grant, I know there'll be forums on here that get different funding. But in terms of the DfE grant, if you did this with your steering group, directors committee, and you actually thought, you know what, our big rocks have really changed. And, you know, there's something, you know, we've hit challenges that we didn't think we were going to be experiencing. and We need to use the grant to do these big rocks. Um, you can change, you know, you can come and say to us, look, you know, our priorities have changed. We need to focus on this, that and the other now. And, and please do that if you if you need yeah. to. Just a really visual way. And I think it's really helpful as well to challenge ourselves to. Are they our big rocks or are they our local areas big rocks? And sometimes we're very reactive to what our local areas need us to do. So if you take send inspections, there are some forums now that produce very intricate reports and that's great. But actually, there's no need for us to do that. So are we are we doing that because we like to and it helps us feel in control as we go into a send inspection? But actually, should it be a big rock or not? And that's the conversation for the, your steering group to have. Thanks, Kate. So there's a little, um, just a, a, another thing. I sound like I'm obsessed with rocks, obviously, but I'm not. <laughs> um, but actually, you know, there's more to life than our forums. And that sometimes is really hard for us to remember. But we choose to be involved with our forums. So just that pause how are you looking after yourself outside of that? And and um, Caroline Tomlinson, one of our trainers in um, the Northwest, once said to somebody from a forum, can I give you permission to walk away? Because this is no longer bringing you any joy. It isn't meeting need. You're just you, you're really angry about it all. And actually, you know, for that person, I think that was OK as well. So we definitely don't want you to leave this call and all of you decide you're not going to be part of your forum. But it's really important to actually think, is this what I want to do? And um, hopefully um, it is. And then I need to relook at the bits that bring me joy and the bits that don't. And why is that really? So um, again, um, I hope you don't mind me using this example, Sarah, but we were talking about something that can feel um, a, a role that you were doing around payroll that felt like it was a bit of a burden. It was being done to you, not with you almost. And then when we discussed this and there was a bit of a reflection, you shifted and she said, actually, I really like doing that because it means I know what's going on. Um, and I think- You mean that... I wouldn't let go of it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. not that I'm controlling, so... <laughs> but I'm um... Yeah, no, I think I did have to really reflect on it because actually it was really, I'm not finances at my strength and actually, but at the same time, it felt like it was something I was doing that was really helpful to the forum. So I, I let go of the the struggle that I was having with it. And it was a really helpful conversation for me to relook at why I was doing it and actually feel differently about the task. And I do now definitely feel differently about it. Oh, that's interesting. Good. Yeah. So, so I guess this session is not that we're going to have all the answers, but we're the only ones who can have this conversation together. Because unless you're involved in a forum, anyone else tries to speak to you and you just think, oh, you don't understand, no idea. And actually, we can push each other to just think about what we're doing and why. Thanks, Kate.
Yeah, this sort of discussion has been hugely helpful for me. And, and I know there was a question back there about prioritizing and things. And for me, I have to have a big rock in there that is about rest and well-being because I can't make effective decisions <laughs> if I don't them. Um, and I procrastinate and I and I struggle and I go back and forth and I spend I could spend an excessive amount of time on one task if if, if I didn't get outside each day and if I if I don't have sleep and all those things. And it's it almost sounds I feel because of the absolute struggle in the Sen system and how you know awful it is for some families it almost feels like oh that feels a bit too luxurious that I shouldn't you know maybe we you know you, you struggle with yourself as to whether you should actually do that and I think you actually should because if if we don't continue in the system you know with forums with what we can do it's going back to that slide as well about focusing on what you can control and what you can do um everything that you can give is is worth it and is is gratefully received it's just making sure that you you model that as well for other people in the team as well and you have you create a team that respects that with each other because other we well, otherwise people become extremely stressed you know because they are working in that environment where services are you know not so great absolutely and I remember a couple of years ago at conference we had um, a woman who did some work on well-being with us and Carolyn and I were in the chat before with her and I said, please don't tell people to go for a walk for an hour though, because none of us have the time or the energy to do things like that. And she was such a great challenge because she was like, well, fill your kettle and put your kettle on to boil and stand at your kitchen door and just take a few breaths of fresh air. And that sometimes is a step towards what you're trying to do. So I think sometimes as parent carers, we're really um, critical of some of the self-care um, strategies people have in mind but we've got to take the bits we can and understand so I think busy can be seductive and I love being busy but actually then I get quite overwhelmed and like oh I'm absolutely too busy but if I had gaps I would fill them and that's that reflection and that honesty I think to that's okay but you need to be aware that's a choice that's not you being done to. And it's about spending that bit of time on self-awareness, isn't it? Because actually it's personal. This is personal and it's different for other people on your team compared to what it is for you. And that's fine. But it's just making space for what works for you, isn't it? Absolutely. That's great. And understanding they may not know what works for you if you're not articulating it. So some of this is also about being able to share with them where your priorities sit and, and where your boundaries are around things. And if you haven't got boundaries that you're going to be working on trying them and, and yeah. see where that goes. Yeah. Good point. So um, we're going to put a link in the chat later. This is a free um, website that you can go on. You can pay, do not pay unless you want to. Um, but it's a number of questions that talk about some realized strengths, some unrealized strengths, some learned behaviors and some weaknesses. So actually how, what are our skills and gifts and strengths? It's really quick to do. It's really easy for a leadership team or a steering group to do as a bit of a conversation. And this is three very different um, profiles, but actually you can imagine how all of those serve a forum, but in very different ways. So how are we building the skill set of your leadership team? Um, lots of people don't see some of these things as skills and gifts. Lots of conversations I have with forum leads where they will say, gosh, I didn't think I had that skill or it says I'm really strong as, you know, narrator, but actually I don't recognise that um, and I don't think I'm very good at that. And it actually it just promotes that conversation of it's fine, we're all different because I think as leads, other people in our forum look to us and think I'm never going to be able to do what they're doing. I'm never going to be able to give that time, but I can't do this and I can't do that. And actually, in effect, they can do other things we can't do. And that really, I think, relaxes that feeling of who might take on roles in the future if you start to play to strengths more. Um, so, you know, some of our family members don't want to go to meetings, but are really, really effective doing some of the other elements who they're really effective at doing coffee mornings. And I'm not great at coffee mornings. So in our forum, we'll have those conversations you know, I, I like them, 
but I'm not great at listening to the same story again and again and not I'm waiting for families to grow and develop. I'm much better kind of being um a, in another role within the forum. So we'll give you this link, but I think this is absolutely crucial for you to do and reflect on, but then also use that with the rest of your team and see if you can um, understand who should be doing different things. So just if you're the co-chair or the chairperson, you know, you don't want to be trying to do everything if some of those things don't sit within your skills and gifts. It's absolutely fine to say to a rep who's great eye for detail, can you be that person who reads through the reports? Can you help us with that? And um, We've almost made our roles so big, nobody can ever step up to do them really, or can even try to start to model that. And then I guess, just going back to that growing a team, keeping a team and letting go. And um, once you have a bit of a clearer idea of where you are, you understand that shared vision, you can celebrate that difference. What can you outsource? So there's lots of elements you can outsource. So the example about the social media, there are some people within my region who are absolutely brilliant at some of that. Can we pay them a couple of hours a week to do that element and just check in with us? Does it need to be us? Do we need to do our finances or can we find someone that's really good who will lead that? Do we need to always be the ones who respond to emails or do we need a secretary role or someone who does admin or engagement? Um, look at your skill set within your steering group and what can you outsource? And then let's think creatively about what that, that can be. I think before COVID uh, or before lockdown, we really struggled to imagine getting somebody outside of our area to do that. And now that's pretty easy. People can be supporting other people, et cetera. And then also, I guess there's something around supervision, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But do we check in and do we check if people feeling valued? Do they understand how their contribution is, is helping that bigger picture? And I think it's what Sarah said before around the social media. We forget some of that sometimes because we're so busy doing the other things, but they're the things that keep a forum going. Oh, that was very nicely handled, Kath, because that was a repeated slide. Yeah, you brought out no, some additional think... things that we didn't talk about before. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. <laughs> and then we're just going to look um, around our communicating effectively, which I think ties in everything we've been speaking about. So actually, if as a team, you aren't all clear on what direction you're going in, that's going to be hard. Um, it's going to be hard because you're going to pull in different directions. So someone mentioned on the jam board, you know, when you've got a steering group, it's fine to have different priorities, but know what your shared priorities are and use that as a bit of a, a litmus test. So if some piece of work comes in or you're asked to go to a meeting as a steering group or a leadership, you can say, how does that fit with what we're doing? Is this going to be important to us? Um, and do your reps know how they can be part of that? Do your members know um, how they can be partners to you? So again, on social media, it's about keeping it simple and not being reactive or defensive. If you're someone who tends to bite when people come at you and they're being a bit tough, then perhaps social media is not for you. Um, you know, the... NMPCF always hear from me. I play the Taylor Swift song in my head, shake it off, because you're always going to get people that don't like what you're doing. But going back to those Tony Ben questions, it's all right to challenge that, but actually are you clear on where your power lies and why? Who are you representing? Or if you've gone off on your own elements? I think it's, um, I always say forums are the devil and the deep blue sea. Parents think you're too in with the professionals. The professionals think you're um, a bit of a thorn in their side at times. And actually, if you can have somebody who does your social media or your communication that can smooth that over, can really help nurture those relationships, then that's worth its weight in gold, really. And if you are doing the best you can, because we're all humans, we are not, you know, we sit at meetings with people who are earning a lot more than us who, who get to do that full time and we often don't. 
But is leaving gaps okay? What's the worst that happens? So I speak to people all the time who say, I'd really like to step down, but I can't because there's nobody to step in to my role. Or I'd really like to reduce what I'm doing, but actually um, there's just nobody there. So I guess the role for us in leading a forum through change is, is that what you really want? And have you had that conversation with someone who will push you a little bit on that? Um, if it is what you want to change your role or step down, then actually is what's the worst that can happen if that seat is left undone? So I know I've had some conversations with Sarah's region and my region around this in that, you know, when you've worked really hard for something, it's hard to risk that collapsing. It's hard to think formal collapse. But actually, if you're still around, you're not saying it's going to collapse. You're just saying you're going to start to put some boundaries in for you. And that can be really helpful for your reps and for that your professionals to be really clear. So some examples, and I'm not endorsing these, but some interesting examples I think we've seen recently are people who say, actually, my working days for the forum are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, between 10 and 2. I will not be responding to emails or coming to meetings that are not in that time. Um, and, and that's, you know, for me, that's really hard as someone who's, in, who's been involved in forums a long time. But actually respecting that boundary, it's really clear. It means that that person does not feel they're at the back of the call of the authority. Um, they are really clear. It's a very, you know, clear boundary. And I think that's really helpful. And I'm seeing that work, even though it isn't something I naturally would say. Um, is it about kind of having these conversations about when our conversations on our WhatsApp stop? Who has to respond to them? Can you mute them? Where's your individual boundaries around communication and how that happens? And are we actually getting together face to face as well? So sometimes when we're emailing, or we're WhatsApping, it's harder to have difficult conversations than when you're in the room. Uh, maybe it's from because I'm from the north, but I hugely think a cup of tea can solve a lot of things. So you sit down together and have a brew, and naturally you'll find you've got more in common than you're disagreeing with. How do we change our language from feeling defensive sometimes? And it is easier said than done. Um, but change that to, you know, I'm going to try and listen to you. How do we do that? And then I guess, how do we embrace change and how do we grow when we get stuck? So it is really natural for forums to get stuck. Um, I was talking to someone the other day who said, you know, I'm meant to be helping people to be the best they can, but they're not my employees, the volunteers. It's not our job to be able to tell them how much time they need to do, et cetera. But actually owning where are the areas we're stuck can sometimes solve those solutions. We're going to talk a little bit about kind of um, supervision, modeling, life coaching, whatever that looks like. But just that space for someone to help keep you moving forward can be really, really helpful. So I don't think anything we're saying here today is rocket science. I think you probably all think that, but it's actually being able to make that time to pause and reflect as your leadership and steering group and think about the direction you want to go to in and then what needs to be done from that. And then I also think, um, you know, as we were talking about this session, um, we could do a full day session, couldn't we, and go into detail. But actually, what do we think didn't work, but why is it bothering us so much? Because some of us respond to different things in different areas. So the things that really niggle me at times when I'm tired and I've got too much on is not feeling appreciated, feeling like people just think that's what I should do because I'm a leader. Um, and actually... Um, we all have very different things that niggle us at different times and let's own what that is. So actually, you know, if somebody is criticising us, that can feel tough. Is there a different language we can use together to do that? Um, and realising that solutions are often within us. So when we talk about succession planning, we have people around us who can do elements of what we do. 
or do we not want a succession plan? Do we reflect on whether that feels uncomfortable? So um, I myself stepped down as being my co-chair of my forum. And um, over a number of years, we now have two co-chairs that have not worked directly with me. And, and actually that feels hard at times, but it feels really healthy. I'm really proud of where they've got to. But actually I have to own that sometimes I think, oh, because I just want to say what should happen because that's what happened in our forum for ages. I know in my head that's not what I want, but sometimes that's the instinct. So are we pausing to reflect on that? If we feel taken advantage of and it's always you, that's really natural. But what can we learn from that? What is in your control around your boundaries? What could you do differently? And are you looking for help in the right places? So again, just for some of us, um, supervision is something that happens in paid roles. It's when, um, you know, you talk about what's working, what's not, et cetera, and what have you got control to do. Modeling would be working with someone who knows forums well and maybe just has those questions and conversations. It's not that you can't answer all those on your own, but sometimes finding that space to do that is helpful. And then coaching is, is um, a slightly softer approach, really, that looks about what your outcomes are and how do we get you to that in its very broadest sense. So I um, and, and Kate was um, kind of having these conversations with me. I feel like our grant should include some sense of supervision, modeling and coaching um, to enable us as leaders within our forum to move forward and not feel as frustrated. Yeah, and I know that grant is limited in terms of the amount, um, but we would certainly think that it's a priority um, for that grant to pay for things that actually help the forum to to run and help its people to run. And all of those things talked about there would. And I think perhaps, you know, even the priority grants, because it, the 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 terms around the priority grants are that, you know, it needs to be a priority for the forum, it needs to be urgent. but if you're facing challenges from a campaign group or other challenges, it all the the only or you you don't and you may face them in the future or you may not. Having these very basic things in in place are what protect your people, you know, or, or what protect your team, and also these are the things that help people to respond in an effective way that protects them, but protects the reputation of the forum and helps to to find a way through. Without these things, people don't have some way of reflecting and learning. And so it's definitely something that could be covered by the grant. But I realise that people, I don't want to sound, sound naive in that, because a lot of people need to put their grant in and just get the basics covered. So, And I know I know finances could be limiting. But I guess the, the things that we, Sorry, Kath, one of the things that we did is that we had an external facilitator come in as a forum when we were going through a bit of a state of flux and didn't quite understand what all our priorities were just to make sure we were in line. And actually, we did that for a few years before the grant, um, the new application went in and we found it really helpful. I mean, we didn't do it every year, but I think we did it for about two or three years running. And it really helped focus us on what we were doing and what we needed to do, what our priorities were um, and the time and the capacity that we actually had. That was really helpful as well. And everyone was really honest about what their time commitments were, what they could get involved in and what they couldn't. And it was a really helpful discussion. Yeah, yeah I think that good. honesty is really important, isn't it? Has anyone else got any thoughts on this? Is this resonating or... So Jennifer's putting in the chat, it's very interesting and different to what I thought the content would be. Um, yeah, I tend to do things a little bit differently. So for me, I think it's it's when when Kate, Sarah, and I were discussing this, it's actually about um how do we start to be the change? You know, it's not a tick list of what you can go through and do, but it's some good ideas, hopefully, that can help you start to think about what your role is within a forum. How long is that going to be? You know, we haven't really touched on it, but if you've been there a while, sometimes a change is good and that's okay for you to start to hand over some of those roles at times. Um, but but the main thing for me is that I think sometimes when you're leading a forum, you feel like you have to and you've no choice and we do have choices around that. Oh, good, Jane. Um, 
so you have an associate, so that's great, Kelly. So you have an associate helping you due to another group and some issues. So again, we've not really touched on those campaign groups. Um, but actually, how do we start to be reactive and transparent around those campaign groups? So being really clear what we do. Um, is there any coaching training that a volunteer can access? Yeah, so I think you could put that within your grants and I think we could have those conversations afterwards with Kate really more than yeah. Sarah and I just because of the, the role. Kelly, I just want to come back to something you're saying about those six steering group members and four wanted to leave. Again, supervision or modelling is really helpful around, well, why is it you want to leave? And often people leave the steering group because they think they can't give it enough time. And actually, it's just about being really clear. And I think some of those things Sarah talked about in not all your not all your steering group have to be as active as everybody else. If you need numbers and you're bringing more people on, could they stay for a while on a limited role to do that? I think the way you set up can sometimes be really tricky around that. And I think Jane's alluding to that. Yeah. So you're hosted by a charity. Um Go on, Jane. Will you read it out, Kath, just for the recording? Yeah, sorry. So Jane's saying um, she now feels we are hosted by the charity that the forum was set up with. Do you want to explain that a little bit more, Jane? Because I think it's a good point for people when they're hosted. Yeah, we, we set us up. That it's, just, it's just how we feel that it's... Um, I can't really explain it very well. Sorry, I know it's going to go on YouTube, so I'm a bit uncomfortable in sharing it. Oh. Sorry. Oh, yes, no, don't that's worry. Fine. Don't worry. Yeah. I just wanted oh. to make sure we understood what you, what you were saying. So I think, yeah. again, yeah. Tell yeah. Me we can always wrong. chat afterwards as well. But I think, in terms of hosts and forums, just more generally, Jane, you raise an important point. You might be having challenges individually that we could talk about, but um, uh, separately, you know. But uh, hosts and forums is a big topic for us because um, just to explain to anybody watching or anybody that doesn't know and doesn't have one, sometimes forums, so a group of parent carers might have another organisation hold the DfE grant and sometimes other money for them. And so that almost requires that other organisation to have an understanding of what the grant is, what the role of a forum is. They have to have skills to work and support that steering group and they're signing to say that they meet the conditions they'll meet the conditions of grant and um, what we what we've advised and we've advanced our advice over the years is um that really there should be a strong agreement between the steering group and any host to make sure that some of those core things are in place and sometimes if there isn't agreement or the agreement isn't quite right for both sides there can be challenges but there's also they can also be massive opportunities of having a host holding your funds if you just haven't got enough people or, or, or capacity straight away I read it completely it's differently cool. Kate so oh. I've read that and I, I'm correct me if I'm wrong James oh so I haven't we, read it Sarah sorry we've converted from um being um oh god a community group into being a cio recently and actually I, I totally and the way i read that was is that i understand why the forum now feels hosted by the a charity that they've set up because actually the whole charity takes on a whole meaning of its own there's a whole load of legal work with it we've had to go into paye we've had to go into a much more of a business model rather than the self-employed volunteer model and it's made it a lot more complicated so you almost feel like you're running a business it's a separate beast and then you're still doing the forum work alongside and I imagine if you've grown your charity and you've been able to take on other bids and other work that have a lot more money attached to it then you, your core PCF work probably feels quite different to some of the other funds that you get in and I can see that being a real conflict for forums as they grow and they develop and actually that's a really valid point on how do we manage to make sure that we're still true to that PCF bit whilst supporting people that are now employees that's the other thing that yeah. I felt quite yeah. responsible for is that people that were just volunteers and self-employed like me 
it was absolutely fine. So if they didn't work, they didn't work. And we all had a quite a good understanding. But now that they're employees, if we don't get the funding, how do I pay for them? I feel a, a different level of responsibility under a different structure. And Jane, may, may, I may have got it completely yeah. wrong, but I read your comment quite differently to what Kate which was talking about, which is where the whole forum is hosted by a completely different charity rather than the forum developing into a charity. Oh, I sorry, I didn't see the comment because I can't see no, the no, chat. No, and, and, and you may be right, Kate, and I may be completely wrong, but uh, I think it's just how you re read the question. Ah, <laughs> and I think, okay. Well, I think that brings us back as well to why conversations within your steering group are really important because we saw this in lockdown. We we get the pet yeah. same the guidance, and we all interpret it slightly different ways. So those that dialogue within your steering group or leadership is absolutely crucial to checking you all know. I think some of the things Sarah was saying around um, having someone external who pulls together what your focus is for the year is really helpful for your grant, um, but also really helpful for how you communicate that to charities or organisations and professionals and other parenting groups as well. So you can try and make that work a bit broader for you. I think Jennifer also put in, in the chat um, a, a couple of things about how can we do that. So I guess um, for most people, supervision or modelling or co coaching can really help them feel much happier in what they're doing, sense of fulfilment, but can also um, be really important around their own development as well. So even if you're not paying them um, to come to the supervision or the modelling or the coaching, actually they find they get an awful lot out of that as well. So you're not um, you're not always suggesting you supervise each other. It's sometimes bringing someone external in who um, you know doesn't have the same time constraints. Might be once a month, might be once a term. It doesn't have to be that often. But just actually for your leadership to start with, where are you going and where, where what's working and what's not can just be really, really supportive. And that can only take an hour sometimes, you know, but it's just actually really helpful. So I had a meeting with a woman a couple of, of weeks ago and just actually there was nothing in that conversation that she hadn't already thought of. It was just having that space to kind of figure out what her priorities needed to be as she moves forward and I think Sarah Lee's putting some great information in there around how associates can be helpful how you know you can talk to your regional advisor around that as well yeah Hope thank you I think some peer-to-peer -peer support as well that's the other thing that we've done regionally is we've looked at um you know helping each other and supporting different forums at different stages and and sharing policies and different bits and pieces so that you're not constantly reinventing the wheel. And that's been really useful to do. Yeah, absolutely. So we're coming to the end of our time. So just, um, uh, you'll get these slides, but just a little thing about what life coaches do. I think they're a word that's used a lot and we don't always have some clarity around what they're there to be. Um, and, um, it is about holding you accountable, but not about putting more pressure on. So it's actually, these are the things you want to happen. So for instance, if you were saying, actually, I want to reduce the hours I spend volunteering at the forum, um, how do I do that? It's actually just a helpful reminder to keep working on the things that are important to you and not getting um, sidetracked, really. Um I'm just checking the chat. So yeah, Sarah Lee's putting some great stuff in there as well. Um, and then we need to remember that it has to be something that that has elements of fun. It's, you know, this isn't like a typical job. These are volunteers who have things going on in their own lives. If we don't try and inspire and motivate or find someone else who can, if that's not your skills and gifts, um, but celebrate how fab forums are and how they change the world. And, you know, we have to kind of believe that we do. And I think we do. And I think we're sometimes a little bit modest sharing that. How do we navigate those messages again? Communication so key to this. How are we telling our members what we're doing? So, so most of us get on and do it, but aren't great at sharing what we do because we're so busy and we don't make time. And that's a challenge for us all, really. And then just some links at the end um, of, of, of the things you could use around personality tests. 
or the strengths profile. That'll just help you to figure out where you're up to, but also where the rest of your team are and doing that together, that will hopefully bring um, some focus to where the gaps are. If you have got gaps, can you bring somebody in who's paid to do that? I think Kate's right. I think Sarah's alluded to it too. We know the grant isn't a huge amount of money, but it has to go some way to sustaining the people who are doing lots of things. That has to be a priority for you to help each other um, get on board with things. You know, if you're going to, um, you will get a recording, Jennifer, yeah, and the slides at the end. So I hope that's been helpful in making you think about how, how maybe you start to think about where you are in a forum, um, what you might want to do, what you might want to not do, and just that reflective um, hour to have a think about it. So we're not running off, so please do continue to chat, but I'm aware some of you may need to. Has anyone got any thoughts? Can I just flag up a few things that are in the Jamboard that appeared after um, oh. you've on. Oh, yeah. There were just four points, I think. Um, so someone had put strategies, how to split operation and strategic between the steering group. Um, I don't know if you want to respond or say anything after each one or just for me to run through them. Yeah, so I think I think I think you're right, Sarah. I think sometimes we, we tend to go to everything we're asked to, almost like the opening of an envelope. And it's fine as a steering group or a leadership team to sit down and go. That, meet, that meets what we're trying to do. There are some core meetings. We don't need to go to everything. We can influence in other ways as well. So I think, you know, that strategic, sometimes people have skills around that and people don't as well. So looking at your steering group, do people want to come along with you to some of those so they don't have that responsibility, but they start to pick up what's happening and just kind of start to almost make yourself a little bit redundant at times. Is, does that answer what you said, Sarah Lee? Sorry. I think that's fine. We could do a whole session on that one. I, think. <laughs> I know. Absolutely. Balance around what parent carers want from you. Um, yeah. I think that's about expectations, isn't it? So again, that narrative we were talking about at the beginning, if we're clear on who we are, what we're here to do, and these are our roles. It's much easier for parents to know some of that doesn't sit within that. I think we get really blurry and then families end up thinking we're not doing what we want to do. Um, and it's prioritising that, which isn't easy, but will be helpful around that narrative. There was another comment on parents don't feel PCF are acting their best interest and feel PCF are too. And they ICB friendly, which I think we touched on earlier. Yeah. So, so I think that's fine because actually we're not there to put individual families' interests. We're collecting the themes that we hear about. So I think some of the best reps we've had are ones that have started off being really angry at what we're doing. And we're saying, well, they're not our priorities. But if you're really interested in, so I'll use an example we've got recently of um somebody wanting to talk about poverty that underpins all the work we do in the area we're in so actually that's great that's your passion please do that but don't think we're not representing those themes we're just not there to represent those individual views i also think you know that's the devil in the deep blue sea isn't it forums get a lot of flat from families because families don't understand what we're doing but they're also hurting and angry and, and I guess that's the other thing about the supervision and the modelling, that trauma-informed approach to moving forward as a forum because we're all parent carers and we've all had experiences that can be really difficult. Yeah, and I think in that example, it is coming back to the honest, compassionate communication and to not be worried about repeating what your role is, you know, on different platforms or, you know, regularly once a month just saying this is what we're here to do, this is what we do, reminding that we're run by parent carers ourselves, we've got limitations, those sorts of things. Uh, we we forget to do that because we get busy with the day job, but it's okay to keep reiterating the role compassionately, I think as well, because forums aren't there, they can't fix everything that's wrong with the 
send system you know that they're, they're doing doing their best just to, to share the views aren't they I, th I think the other thing I'll add there as well, though, sometimes it's really hard when families feel managed and sometimes we do yeah. fall into the practice of managing it just because we don't want to have to um, deal with that. We're trying to fix maybe a little bit. So some of the forums who do um, the listening events where you're not controlling who's saying what they can come and speak to strategic leads are just really helpful in thinking we're not that gatekeeper to voice we're not controlling that we're just simply bringing the themes along aren't we to to share mm. um is there anything else Sarah Lee? Oh, um, how to manage parent care expectations when the local authority and ICB regard you as a statutory service yeah, which I think you kind back of against, touched on. Yeah, really. push back against all of that, really. So it's important that our, our localities understand who we are, and we kind of not call them out on it, but we're really clear that some of you know I say in my area all the time. Some of our social workers still think we're helping people fill in forms. That's not what we're there to do. Can you, as strategic leads, please help get that message through? And it does trickle down a little bit. But equally, I think, you know, just those expectations, being really honest, et cetera. Okay. Oh, go on. Yes. This is just an idea something that one of the forums are working on. Um, it's just saying that they're working towards building an independent income stream. So we'll have big changes coming. Mm. So it's like a very That's positive. Yeah, that's lovely. So thank you. And there's some really lovely uh, comments in the chat as well. So I really appreciate that. And I think it's about making the time to just keep looking at this, that we're all on a journey. And I know we hate saying journey, but we are all on that journey of where we're up to, reflecting, and we can help each other to keep moving forward as a forum through some change. Um, thanks very much, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it and we will speak to you soon. Thank you.